One major lesson of development economics is that borders really matter, and we can see this more clearly by tracing the course of a tomato going from Mexico to the United States. In the United States, tomatoes cannot be grown year-round in most of the country because it simply isn't warm enough. So if you're living in America and you're eating a tomato between, say, the months of December and February, well, that's probably a tomato from Mexico. Many parts of Mexico, in fact, grow tomatoes and export those tomatoes to the United States. If you're working for a Mexican company which exports tomatoes to the United States, quite typically those tomatoes will be sorted. The workers will look through the picked tomatoes, and the ones that are especially round, especially plump, look especially juicy, or especially firm, and would appear to be easy to pack and ship. Well, those tomatoes are put in crates, and then they are sent off to the United States. Here's the thing. Once a tomato from Mexico is sent to the United States, it immediately goes up in value by, say, at least a factor of three. It's not always that easy to get tomatoes across the border. You need to ship them through perhaps significant parts of Mexico. There may be a wait at the border to clear customs. The tomatoes require refrigeration all along the way. And finally, even when they're once in the United States, they still need to be brought to the right place in the United States. So if moving a tomato from Mexico to the United States increases its value by a factor of three, that's really an additional testament to simply how much laws and institutions and borders matter that essentially the same tomato in the United States could be worth several times more. If you think of the marginal tomato being sent to the United States and the marginal tomato being left behind in Mexico, they're actually pretty similar, yet there's still this significant price discrepancy. The tomatoes which get left behind in Mexico tend to be smaller and more uneven and harder to pack. We do these videos using a photo service, and I kept on looking around for those photos of small, uneven, slightly perhaps ugly tomatoes, but in fact in that photo service, which is American, uh, they're very difficult to find. Americans like to see the image of a big, plump, fat, juicy tomato, as shown in this photo. Finally, I found a photo which gives some sense of how the Mexican tomatoes are more likely to look. This seems to be a photo from the U.S., but nonetheless it illustrates some smaller and less even tomatoes. Many individuals, including myself, actually think the smaller Mexican tomatoes usually taste better. They have less water in them, they have more taste, and they're not subject to that same numbing, long process of refrigeration. But it's not about what I think that matters, it's about what consumers in the United States think, and they seem to prefer the larger, smoother-looking, more watery tomatoes. Those customers have higher wealth, and in the United States there are also more efficient systems of retailing, and that accounts for the fact that a tomato, when you ship it across the border, can increase in value several times. To return to the key lesson in development economics, borders really matter. On different sides of a border you have different laws, different institutions, and different levels of wealth. This can give you very different economic values, whether it's for labor, crossing the border, or for tomatoes. For background and sources on this topic, see my book, An Economist Gets Lunch.